Hi, my name is Tim Vivant. I'm a fisheries biologist with the Alaska Department of Fish and Game. And I'm going to talk about some of the things that you want to have with you when you go dip netting at Chitna. If you're going to Chitna and you've never been before, you might be wondering, well, you know, what do I need? So these are some of the things that you'll definitely want to have with you. First of all, don't go down to Chitna without a fisheries dip net permit. You also need to have your sport fish license with you. You want to have both of those items on your person while you're fishing. If you're fishing from shore, you want to have rope to tie fish on a stringer because if you've climbed down the rocks to a fishing site, you often don't take a cooler with you and you don't have room to store any fish. So as soon as you catch them, you tie them on a stringer, tie that to a rock and leave them in the river. Obviously, you're going to need to have a dip net with you. If you're fishing from shore, you probably want a head that looks like this. Uh, it's smaller and you can handle it in the water if you're sweeping or if you're fishing an eddy. If you're fishing from a boat, these big flat bottomed large dip net heads work the best. There's also a lot of discussion and opinion about what kind of mesh to have on your dip net bag. This gill net mesh is very effective at catching fish, but fish get tangled up in it and it can be a real pain to get them out once you've caught them. This mesh is much easier for dumping fish out of. They don't tend to get gilled in it, but it also they don't catch quite as many fish as easily. And Dip netting can be pretty hard on the mesh. You get holes blown through where eventually a fish will fit through there. So I always bring along seine twine for repairing the mesh on your dip net. As far as dip net handles, it's a really good idea on your dip net handle to have one of these square shovel handles at the tip gives you some control over the dip net and it also allows you to see what the orientation of your head is in the water. If you're sweeping, you'll want some kind of a T-handle on the side of the dip net. Gives you some leverage and some control over the dip net while you're sweeping. Uh, dip nets come from the store with a little spring-loaded tab here, but we find it much smarter to take that off and drill it out and run a bolt all the way through the head and the handle. You also need to have a fish whopper stick to uh, dispatch those salmon. Scissors to clip both of the lobes of the tail fin, which you have to do before you leave the fishing site. For your fish to be legal. Knives to clean fish with and fillet them. I always bring gloves because dip netting is kind of hard on your hands and carrying fish and coolers is hard on your hands so it's good to have a pair of gloves. You can almost never go wrong having duct tape. You never know what you'll need to use it for but it's good to have along. And besides having seine twine, I always bring an entire new dip net head mesh. You can buy these where you buy your dip nets, and uh, once your mesh gets really torn up, instead of trying to repair all those holes, you can just put a whole new mesh netting on your dip net. If you're fishing from a boat, you definitely want to have a life jacket. If you're fishing from shore, you want to be wearing it because people do fall into the river now and then when they're dip netting and you'd rather fall in with a life jacket than not. Also, if you are fishing from a boat, I always carry a rescue throw line in the boat. In case someone falls over, you can throw it to them and get them back in the boat a lot quicker than having to chase them down. If you're fishing from down below the right of way in the canyon, you want to have some kind of a backpack that you can carry fish back up to the road right of way with. Um, I use an old dry bag that's got backpack straps. I can just put the fish right in it. 
A lot of people take a regular backpack and line it with garbage can liners. But you do need something to carry them up. They're, they're hard to carry on a stringer, uh, especially if you catch 30 of them. If you're fishing from a boat or you've taken a four-wheeler down, it's a real good idea to have extra gas. You always seem to burn a little more than you think. And of course, you need to have a couple big coolers. You need big coolers because you're going to catch a lot of fish, and you need big coolers because they need to be half full of ice, so there's room to put fish in with the ice. I usually take eight to ten bags of ice, and that lasts about three days, which by that time you're usually caught all your fish and you're on your way home. So if you're planning on camping at Chitna, here's a couple options. A lot of people on ATVs camp in the right-of-way right next to the trail beyond O'Brien Creek. People also car camp on the road between Chitna and O'Brien Creek. Neither of these options are near any restroom facilities. People also camp right at O'Brien Creek. You can camp within the road right of way, but it's usually noisy and crowded with lots of traffic, and you're pretty much camping in a parking lot. O'Brien Creek is also the site where you get picked up if you're paying for a charter. You can also pay the Chitna Native Corporation to camp on their private land outside the road right of way. There are restrooms available at O'Brien Creek. People also camp at the McCarthy Road Bridge. There is a public DOT campground on the south side of the road on the east bank with picnic tables and developed campsites. You can also pay Otna Native Corporation to camp on their private lands near the bridge. So if you're in a boat or you're using a four-wheeler, you can also go downstream and camp at Haley Creek. However, if you camp outside of the road right away, you'll have to pay for an access permit from Otna Native Corporation. Although it's a long way from the fishery, there is also a state park campground at Liberty Falls before you get to the town of Chitna. It's very scenic and has well-developed campsites and is a fee area. Remember, there's lots of bears around Chitna, and so you should always take appropriate precautions. So, good luck and good fishing at Chitna.